Have you noticed a change in your stomach after having been diagnosed with a thyroid problem? If so, you aren't alone. Beyond having to deal with problems like hair loss, depression, and weight gain, your thyroid can also cause a disturbing condition known as thyroid belly. What is a thyroid belly? It's the characteristic distension of the abdomen that appears to be unique to thyroid patients, and its severity can range from mild to severe. In most mild cases, it may just look like you ate a large meal, but in the extreme cases, it may make you look pregnant. Some thyroid patients believe that this thyroid belly is purely related to fat, while others believe that it's purely related to the gut. The reality is that it's often caused by a combination of all of these things, and they all can be tied back to your thyroid. While it's certainly a frustrating condition to have to deal with, the good news is, is that you can take care of it and you can eliminate it. But in order to do that, you have to understand what causes it. And number one on that list is visceral fat. This is probably the first, but most dangerous that we will discuss. Visceral fat is the worst type of fat that you can gain on your body because it's the fat that surrounds your organs. And research study after research study has proven that visceral fat is much more dangerous than its cousin, subcutaneous fat. While both types of fat can cause problems, and while both can contribute to the thyroid belly shape, Visceral fat is the first type of fat that you want to deal with because its presence can cause problems for your long-term health. What causes it? Believe it or not, we aren't completely sure. What research has shown us is that some people are more prone to developing visceral fat over subcutaneous fat, and at least part of this reason has to do with genetics. The other part, the part that actually matters for this discussion, is related to your lifestyle and to your thyroid. We know that visceral fat is often associated with a condition known as metabolic syndrome, which is a constellation of problems including things like insulin resistance, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. If you have all four of these problems, then you are said to have metabolic syndrome. Unfortunately, thyroid dysfunction directly impacts blood pressure, cholesterol, and weight, which is probably why about one out of four people with thyroid problems also have metabolic syndrome. Having a thyroid problem doesn't guarantee that you will get metabolic syndrome, but it certainly makes it far more likely that you will. As a result, many thyroid patients develop metabolic syndrome and plenty of visceral fat to go along with it. Even though visceral fat is located deep inside of your body where it surrounds your organs, as it enlarges and gets bigger and bigger, it pushes outward on your abdomen. This causes a distension of the abdomen, which contributes to the thyroid belly shape. Number two on the list is gas and bloating. Even if visceral fat isn't contributing to your thyroid belly, this next one probably is. A dysfunctional gut. Thyroid patients are prone to developing all sorts of different types of gut problems, including infections like H. pylori, and even overgrowth syndromes like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And the reason for this has to do with how thyroid hormone impacts the gut. In the healthy state, thyroid hormone helps your gut move in a rhythmic constant motion known as peristalsis. But when your thyroid is either too high or too low, it will either speed up or slow down your gut respectively, which is exactly why hyperthyroidism often causes diarrhea and why hypothyroidism often causes constipation. Thyroid patients with hypothyroidism and or Hashimoto's thyroiditis have to deal with abdominal distension from two main causes. The first is constipation, and the second is gas. And both of these contribute to the thyroid belly shape. Constipation is pretty easy to understand. If your gut is moving slower than it should, the food that you eat will stay in your intestines for longer than it should. Instead of having a bowel movement every 24 hours like you should, you may have a bowel movement every two or three or even four days. The more constipated that you are, the more stool you will have inside of your abdomen, and the more it will push outward. The second has to do with excess production of gas. Gas is usually the result of swallowing too much air, but it can also be produced by the bacteria composition inside of your gut. And because thyroid dysfunction impacts gut motility, it can have an impact on the concentration of the bacteria found inside of your small intestines. Because of this, hypothyroid patients are more prone to developing a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And this condition is incredibly common among thyroid patients, where some studies have shown that about 50% or one in two thyroid patients have it. Both gas and constipation can contribute to that thyroid belly shape, which means optimizing your gut is important if you want to eliminate it. Number three on the list is subcutaneous fat. Compared to what we've talked about thus far, it might be easy to shrug off subcutaneous fat as something you don't need to worry about, but that would be a mistake. 
As I mentioned previously, subcutaneous fat is the type of fat that's right underneath your skin. And you can think of this fat as the type of fat that wiggles and jiggles. For most people, when they say that they want to lose belly fat, they're often referring to this subcutaneous fat because this is the fat that they can feel with their fingers. Unfortunately for thyroid patients, they are more prone to developing both subcutaneous fat and visceral fat, but which one they gain more of depends on their situation. You can think about it like this. The hypothyroid or low thyroid state promotes weight gain by virtue of its impact on your metabolism. The slower your metabolism, the more likely you are to gain weight. It's pretty simple. But where your body places that fat depends on lifestyle factors like the quality of the food that you're eating and how active you are. If, for instance, you are overeating on relatively healthy foods, your body is going to be more likely to place that extra fat in the subcutaneous region. This is because aside from having just a little bit of extra fat on your body, that fat is still considered metabolically healthy which means it can still produce hormones like leptin that can communicate with your brain. On the other hand, if you are eating relatively unhealthy foods, think things like processed foods, fast foods, industrial seed oils, etc., you are more likely to place whatever extra fat that you gain from these foods around and in your viscera. This is because these processed and unhealthy foods not only bring in excess calories, but they also bring in inflammation, which can damage your fat cells, leading to a condition called adiposopathy. Most thyroid patients will end up with a combination of subcutaneous fat and visceral fat, but the exact ratio will vary depending on the things that we just discussed, like your lifestyle factors. While subcutaneous fat will probably not increase your risk of heart disease, at least not to the same degree as visceral fat, it still contributes to the thyroid belly shape and it's not very cosmetically pleasing, which means if you want a flat abdomen, you'll still probably want to get rid of it. Number four is fluid retention. Due to its impact on a compound called hyaluronic acid, the hypothyroid state can result in fluid accumulation in different tissues. If it happens in your wrist, you may end up with carpal tunnel syndrome. If it happens in your legs, you'll end up with peripheral edema. If it happens in your face, you'll end up with a hypothyroid looking face or puffy eyes. And if it happens in your belly or in your abdomen, you'll end up with a thyroid belly shape. This isn't as common as the other three conditions I just mentioned, but it does come up from time to time, so it's still important for you to know. The good news is this problem tends to clear up on its own as you address the other conditions that I just mentioned previously. So can you get rid of a thyroid belly shape? Absolutely. While it can be difficult, it's not impossible. And even if you are somebody who can't get a completely flat stomach, you can very often get very close. Eliminating the thyroid belly shape is all about addressing your treatment at the right problem, which is exactly why I spent so much time explaining each of these four causes. Once you have figured out which of these problems is more important to your personal situation, it's just a matter of addressing that problem. And if you are somebody who isn't sure where to start because you don't know what your main problem is, then I would recommend starting by optimizing thyroid function. You can do that the all natural way with things like diet, lifestyle, and supplements, or you can go with the more prescriptive way, which is the use of prescription thyroid medications. Either way, I have tons of resources to help you do just that. And if you are somebody who wants to optimize your thyroid, then I'd recommend checking out this video next.